Hello. Hopefully everyone can hear me okay. We'll get started in just a couple moments, but just wanna, wanna check to make sure my mic is working. All right, so it's the top of the hour, so I think we'll get started here. Uh, first of all, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, today we're going to cover SEs, uh, standard evaluations. Um, we we kind of ran, ran something pretty similar kind of the very first week that we set out on these webinars. Um, uh, Kyle had, had ran that one, and so today kind of give another chance for people that maybe weren't um, uh, weren't in that first one, and uh, maybe we'll end up with, with different questions. You always end up with something a little bit, a little bit different as as you go through the material each time. So, um, that's that's our topic today. We've got a couple of of housekeeping items to start with. Uh, number one, the chat, which I'm sending a message through right now. Uh, that is the best way to submit questions. So if I get going too fast on a topic, you need me to slow down, um, cover something again. Um, or, or have a question about, about something that we're talking about um, that, that works best to throw it in the chat. Um, normally, normally I'll kind of see it out of the corner of my eye. A uh, worst case, I like to pause every now and then just, just to double check. And then also kind of at the end of, of the presentation is a great time for questions. If, you, if you're kind of holding on to it to, to the end or something, that's, that's a great time. We usually have a few minutes to, to hit anything else that, that we'd want to talk about. So. Uh, also, we are recording this session as we have all of our other webinars that we have ran. So out on our homepage at gdmdata.com, you'll find under the resources heading, we've got a webinars page. 
and this is kind of where we'll post um, ones we're, we're planning out in the future and at the bottom is our archives so there you'll see all of the recordings of of the ones we have done so far uh, and uh, probably later by this afternoon you'll see another one pop up here at the top of, of today's uh, session so if you you want to review what we covered or share it with with a friend um, that'll be the place to go All right, uh, before I start here, I'm just gonna turn off my video. I find that in the recording then it leaves my, my mug up in the corner there for the whole recording. So um, maybe we'll just turn that off there so that way the recording is a little bit cleaner and we'll dive in then to today's topic, which is uh, SEs, standard evaluations. Um, and really, really the goal of this, there, there's several different, uh, several advantages to uh, using SEs. Um, really, the, the first one is, is time savings. Uh, you'll see that um, it, can, it can save you a lot of time. Really, what we're going to do today is, is looking at your assessment columns. Uh, the way that you describe an assessment column, refer to kind of generically as the assessment header. And what an SE is, is a uh, saving and encapsulating um, some or all of the pieces of information you use to describe an assessment. And you save that to a file that then you can reuse and you could even share with others. So uh, the advantage, advantage to that is, is time savings that you don't have to sit and fill out the same column over and over again. Um, you've got it in a file so you can quickly load all of that information um, repeatedly and, and save you some time that way. Um, and then um, even kind of an even bigger scope is that that allows you to standardize your headings. And you can, you know, you can standardize them, um, you know, across uh, your trial lists. So if you're, you're a sponsor and you're creating a protocol and, and you want to send, send out, um, you know, your, your trials, yeah, SEs is a way to kind of standardize so, you're, so all of the trial lists can use that same description. Um, across all those trials. And, and you'll be able to then uh, combine the data much easier that way um, because the data will be described the same way in each time. Um, and also, also you can standardize it within your own company. So, so if everyone gets together and say, this is the way we, we want to describe a, a Phygen rating, for example, here on, on my screen, you can create an SE file on, on somebody's computer and then it's just, just a file that lives on your computer. So it's easy to copy that uh, and share that with everyone else in the company. So now you have everyone in the company can use that same file and then everyone is describing their Phygen ratings the same. Um, so provide great consistency that way, um, even, even just for yourself too. So if, if you're a one man band um, or you're doing a lot of trial work, um, if, if, if I was doing research, I'm sure I wouldn't trust myself to describe things the same. Um, if I made it a whole season describing it the same, I think that would that'd be an A plus for myself, um, but, but <laughs> would find it very unlikely I would do everything identical the, the next year. I'm sure I'd always be digging up old trials to, to make sure I did it the same. Um, so if I can just save it to a file, you don't have to worry about that either. So that's really the goals and the advantages. Um, of, of kind of where we're going, why you would, why the care? What, what are we doing with these SE files? So, so if we dive in here, um, kind of a, something that I recommend doing, um, you can get started really any way you want. If you want to start with a blank slate, um, it's possible to create an SE in a protocol. Um, but, but what I would recommend maybe is open up a trial from like last year. And, and that'd be a good starting point to say, okay, how did we fill in certain assessments last year? You know, is, is this the way we want to do them? Um, you could certainly kind of perform this action um, of, of creating these SEs, maybe in a group. If you're in a company where there's, you know, four or five people using um, ARM in, in your group and you want to make sure everyone's on the same page, you know, you could get together, um, you know, have somebody share their screen and, and uh, can kind of work together to build what, what you would want. Um, if you start with the trial here, then I've got my, uh, I just opened up our fungicide example from our tutorial, and we will use the assessments, kind of the way we described our assessments here. I've got, you know, a, a dozen of them or so. Um, we can 
then save some of these descriptions so that way we can use them again. And so uh, to, to start with, uh, let's just look at the assessments. I've got like a, a Phygen, a, a Vigor percentage that we ran kind of early on in the season. Or, never mind, that's I guess in July. Here we did in May, kind of early on, we did a pest severity and then we did a calculation um, to do a percent of check there. And then we repeated that kind of two two step column there. Let's see if we did that a couple of times throughout the season. Uh, percent area, and then we've got yield information. Um, so the raw yield, moisture content, converted it to metric ton, and then did the percent of check as well. Um, so we can can use this kind of as as our example and, and kind of build and automate these these SEs so we can maybe so we can do something similar again this year or in, in the next trial. So to create an SE from a column you already have here, I'm just going to right click in that column and you can export SE. Um, if I haven't said already, SE is short for standard evaluation. Um, this is why we, we use that acronym there. <clears throat> so just a couple of questions here ARM has in order to build this uh, SE. <clears throat> First one is, which column numbers should I include? So you could choose just a single column. You could choose multiple columns if you wanted. Um, this first one, let's just pick just this one column of, of Phygen uh, is the one I'm going to want to export. So you can click on column numbers to fill it in. You can hand type and, and it'll make that selection. Um, I'll stick with just column one here. Say OK. This next step is really kind of, kind of the heart of, of what you want to do with, with the SE. And so it's going to ask which of the rows from the header, um, you know, which pieces of information do you want to include? This is kind of, this is kind of the bread and butter of, of um, you know, what, what you're doing with the SE. And, and there's a lot of kind of decisions you can make here. Um, I'm gonna go over to my properties panel and it's showing us just a few of the possible rows. So what I want to do is I'm going to click on this all fields view and it's going to then display all of the rows of my header. So that'll be a nice way we can look at look at all of them and kind of see um, which pieces of information I, I maybe want to bring. So in this case, we don't have a pest selected at all. Um, so, so we're not dealing with with a pest at all. So there's really no point in including any of that information. Um, the crop, uh, we certainly could include all of the, uh, the crop selection. It, I think it would, you would have to ask yourself though, um, as I'm going to standardize this, um, is this rating specific to this crop? You know, do, do I want an SE that specifically will include winter wheat or not? So when I load this in later, it'll grab, uh, basically we're gonna save whichever pieces of information we want from this column, and then we can load it again and again into new assessment columns. Well, am I always going to want to have winter wheat selected for any of, of the Phygen um, ratings that I load? Uh, so kind of two options, I could say, well, you know, okay, most likely there's probably other crops I deal with. I could either create um, multiple SEs and I could do it, you know, I could do one for each crop that I have um, that, I, that I care about. So maybe, you know, there, I only do work on you know, maybe five different crops. So it's not too hard if I want to create a winter wheat Phygen and then I can do my next crop um, with Phygen and I can create a bunch of SEs. Um, I think maybe more likely in, in this case, we would not select a crop because um, it's not very specific. And then when I load in my SE, I can just then, all I have to do is select which crop I am, I'm in, in that study, and, and I'm good to go. So we'll clear that selection and, and not include that. The rating date, that one's kind of a special one. So um, it, 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 ARM won't actually include the date that is entered but it can include any study rules that you may have included um, in, in the header. 
And so I do have a rule where it, it, I'm requiring that the, uh, the rating date be entered. So I'm gonna include this row. Um, so that way, when I load my SE in another study, that study rule will come with as well. If I really wouldn't want the rating time, um, but I definitely want the part rated, rating type, and rating unit. Those are really kind of the core of, of an assessment description. Um, so I want to make sure to include those. Um, the rest of these are, are empty, so there's really no need to include any of those um, pieces of information since there's really nothing to, to bring across. Um, I could bring in a number of subsamples since, since that's going to be one. Um, the rating timing probably don't want to include because that's not something that's going to be universal. No matter when I load it in, I'm, I'm going to want to pick my own rating timing. Uh, kind of the same thing for these intervals. Um, so, so some of the interval fields, um, ARM won't include that content either, since it's always going to vary depending on the rating date um, and, and the study that it is in. So even if I were to choose those, um, that content actually won't, won't even come across. Okay, so I have the pieces of information that I want to bring across. Um, essentially, it's going to be um, the, the rating date study rule, and then kind of this core here of, of those fields is, is what I want to save into this file. So now when I click OK, ARM is going to ask to, to name the file, and it's going to save it onto my computer. In, in this GDM def folder. So this is, a, this is probably the recommended place to save it. It'll be on your computer, and then when you wanna load in, this is the first folder ARIM will have you look at. And so you want to give this a, a logical name. Um, so in our example, we're doing, um, you know, our, our leaf phygen maybe is, is how we would wanna describe it. Um, you know, if I had chosen to include our crop name, I would want to say on, on wheat, um, you know, if, if that was a piece of information I had, had saved in the SE, I would want to make sure that I am aware of that in, in the name. In this case, I did not do that, so we'll just, we'll just call this leafigen um, and save it in the location. And so you'll see that the file itself has an extension .se. Not something you have to have to worry about too much, but that's uh, just kind of another tie in that'll be kind of clear that that is what kind of file it is, is it's, it's an SE file. So now we press save, and then there is a description that you can include as well. And so what'll happen is when you use this file, ARM will use the name of the file and put that in the row SE name, and then this description that we give it will be put in the SE description. So that'll be a nice way if you want to filter or search for, for columns where you've used that SE or, or combine them in ST, um, those fields will be very handy to, to utilize. So um, this description, again, it can be maybe a little bit more English term. It can be kind of short and, and simple with a file name, but here in the description, maybe you can um, open it up a little more. Um, maybe I'll just say Phygen percent on leaf. Um, something a little, little bit more human readable um, since I have a little bit more flexibility as, as a description. All right, so green is good, data export successful. So we, we created this file and it's, it's living on my computer. And here, just open up that folder to where that file is at. Don't really need that open though. So now what we can do, essentially what we've done is we've saved that description. So if I want to use it again, here I'm just gonna to go to a new assessment column here and right click. I'm going to insert SE from file. So now if we choose that file we just created, then in column 14, it's going to uh, copy in just the pieces of information that we chose to include in that SE that we just exported. So there we've got our part rated, rating type, rating unit. Uh, you can see it also loaded in the SE name and description from the file. And then the number of subsamples was really the only field that, that we included. So you'll notice there is no crop. 
that got copied because we chose to not to bring that into the file itself. Um, it also kind of popped up the study rules editor here because it, it loaded in the, the rule about the rating date. I already kind of had that in place um, in this file since we created it from this file. It's not too surprising I've already, already have that in place. We'll see that if we were to, to be in like a new protocol or a different file that that rule would, um, would be added. Um, that's kind of why that, that appeared. So, so you can see there that really the, the goal of this is to make it easy to, to, to copy uh, the, the, the way you described that um, rating and, and duplicate that and load it in multiple times across several files. Or you can continue if this, you know, if we were going to continue to repeat the FIGEN every week or something, um, it's easy to load, load that file over and over again. Let's create another one. So I'm gonna click in the column three um, to show here, we kind of had that three and four were kind of a group together. Uh, we did in May and then a month later, we came out and did kind of the same thing again. And then again in, in July we did. So that's a really great example of, of a good time to, to, to utilize an SE. So I'm just going to right click and, oops, not insert, I want to export. So this time I'm going to take columns three and four together. You know, they're kind of a pair and we're going to repeat that um, over and over again. So let's, let's choose uh, several columns to bring in to this SE. All right, again, let's, I'm just going to open up to, um, actually what I'll do is hidden fields with information. So any, any field that had information entered in will be visible. I don't need to see kind of any of the other ones. So that'll be kind of a nice field. Um, so here we're doing the, the pest severity. Uh, so again, we kind of have that same debate here. We do have the pest involved, um, but in, in my case, yeah, I probably don't want to, maybe I don't want to include that in this SE, so I can always select which pest it is being dealt with. So maybe I want this just to be a generic pest severity SE. So we'll keep the pest out of it, we'll keep the crop out of it, um, but again it, it kind of depends on um, the research you're doing. If, if I only ever work with, with one crop, I'm only ever doing winter wheat, or I'm only going to perform a pest severity on winter wheat, or I'm only going to perform a pest severity on um, maybe disease. I could I include the pest type but not bother with the code and at least give me a little shortcut into entering um, which which pest it is. Um, it, you can you can pick and choose just just depending on um, the realm how you can envision yourself using the the SE. So we'll we'll, we'll do the pest type. Why not? Um, and then kind of leave everything out um, everything else out here. Uh, rating date. Yep, we want to include that um, that study rule with us. Again, part rated, rating type, rating units important. This one though, the sample size is also important. Um, if, if we typically would, would want to be doing it on the 10 leaves and, and maybe not if, if we, you did only want, you know, if you want to be able to customize how many leaves you would do, maybe you don't want to include it. So really just, really just depends on, on what, what it is you want to always have included in that um, assessment there. Crop stage, uh, that's, you know, that's an example there where um, I, I would most likely not want to include it uh, unless for some reason it's, it's always going to be, you know, 32 in this case. So, you know, we had those, those yield columns farther down uh, the, the row there, and maybe that would be an example. It's always going to be 99 because it's yield. You could probably include that then, but in this case, you really wouldn't want to include the crop stage majority um, with with the SE because it can change depending on what when you're you're doing the assessment. Question here: Can you save an SE as several different SEs with slight changes to each? Yes. So you can certainly keep making as many SEs as you want. They're tiny, tiny little files on on your computer. So you know, kind of as I mentioned with, with the, the crop and pest, maybe, maybe I'm going to do, um, 
you know, pest severity, but really I, I only see, you know, maybe five different diseases as really the only type of, you know, the, the, the research that I'm doing on diseases, there's, there's only a handful of them. So I'm going to create um, an SE for, for each one of them. And, and uh, that certainly is, is definitely viable. And so I would, you know, in that case, I would choose pest code, um, bring all of them in. And then when I save the name, I would want to make sure to include either, you know, the, the pest code or however I want to, to note that the pest is included in that. And then you could do the same thing um, and, and change the disease and then just do an export SE and save it um, you know, pest severity with, with the, the next disease that, that you're researching. So that's definitely, definitely viable if, if you want, you know, if you have really a limited number, maybe crop is more likely that you'd have kind of a limited set that, that you typically would work with. Um, create, create an SE for each one of those then. So then when you're loading the SE in, um, you can pick which one is which crop and that all the crop info will be saved in there. Um, that, that is certainly, certainly a good technique. All right, so crop stage, we'll leave that blank. I guess I could, could choose, the, choose the scale if I wanted, if it's always gonna be BBCH, um, I could choose that, but I wouldn't want the, the scale information itself since that, that would differ depending on, on the rating. Uh, same thing maybe with the pest density, uh, rating timing, the intervals. Um, it is important in this case though, to include the ARM action codes field. You'll notice that in column four, we have a calculation. So we're performing an, an, an Abbott's calculation on column three. And so this TAB calculation needs to be included in the SE. So that way when we load it again, that calculation will be used in, in that second um, piece of information. And maybe I always like to see two decimal places. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'll leave that out, and I can choose um, in in the you know, when whichever decimals I would want um, when when I load that in. All right. So here again, I get to to choose my name. Um, we will call it pest severity. Um, 10, since I'm doing 10 leaves, um, you know, the naming, the naming is kind of up to you uh, on, on how you want to do it. We didn't include our pest or our crop, so I don't need to include that in my name, but otherwise I certainly would if, if that was the approach we took. Um, maybe I'll say 10L for 10 leaf, um, so we know what, what we're talking about. Again, you can be a little, little bit more English English language there uh, with it if you like. Um, okay, so we've just created another file. Uh, it's going to keep opening that folder there where the file is saved. So if I come over here, we'll show what happens now in column 15 if I want to utilize that assessment again. I'm just going to right click. It doesn't matter which field you, you click into that column, but as long as you're clicking in the column that you want to, to bring it into, then we can insert SE from file. I'm just going to choose that one we just created. And so now we'll see in column 15 and column 16 get filled in with the information we just saved in the file. So again, no, no pasture crop chosen for us, but the, the pieces of information that we want to bring across are included. And that includes the calculation. So if, if we go in and start typing in our, our data, let me just fire in some data numbers here real quickly. And you'll see that uh, the calculation is, is being done with that um, because we included the action codes field that has that transformation um, in, in the SE. <clears throat> Another question, how do you share these SEs with others in the company? Network drive, email to others that the file's attached, um, you got it. Um, either, either one of those options would certainly work. The nice thing is it's just, it's just a file. It's just the same as sharing a, uh, a Word document or something like that. 
Um, so it's, it's kind of this magic place that uh, is, is on your computer. And this path here is your GDM def folder. So this is where what ARM uses when you create a report set, when you create a, a rule set, uh, pretty much anything that, uh, that you do to kind of customize uh, your, your ARM there and, and automate things. This is kind of the location where it's at. And so, yeah, all you would have to do is go ahead and, and locate that SE. You know, here maybe I do date modified. I can see I've got that pest severity and the leaf phygen that I, that I just created. Um, so yeah, they're just files. If you want to, you could just do a send to and, and send it through um, email um, to, to send it to your, your colleagues. Um, you could copy it out to a network drive. That would be a great option as well. Um, if you're, you know, if, if you're sharing them among colleagues, um, there's even some, some methods to automate that. So depending on how many of these you, you create, or if it's kind of a continual rolling thing where, where you would continue to add them, um, we even have a process where you can create what, what we call a, a uh, validation list library. Um, is, is really what we call it. So you could do this with your product list, just like your SEs, um, report sets, anything um, that kind of shows up here in, in this folder, you can um, share that with your colleagues and have them sync automatically. Um, so we can kind of help, help with that process. Um, there's just some batch files that, that we can help uh, create and uh, basically you choose one person in your company to be the data coordinator, we call them, um, and their ARM will copy their SEs, their report sets, their product lists, things like that, copy it from their computer out to like a network location. And then everyone else's ARMs have a slightly different file that tells their ARM to go out to that network location and copy all of those files onto their computer. So then everyone in the company is synced together to that data coordinators lists and SEs and report sets and all of those things that you can automate. Um, so then everyone automatically has all of those files on their computer, on their ARMs. Um, so that, that's a pretty easy process actually. It sounds, sounds a little complicated, but it's pretty easy from our side to, to set that up. So if you're interested, um, just, just let us know. Um, uh, but that's the, the most sophisticated answer to that. But really, it is just as simple as sending it in an email and telling people, hey, copy these files to your GDM dev folder, and, and you'll be able to use them in your ARM. So it can be just that easy. Or, or if you put this out on a network location, then when you go to insert the SE, you could even go out to that network location yourself all the time. You don't even need to have it just on your local computer. So if you had had a network drive and, and put everything out there and just tell tell people where it's at, they can they can pull them there. So all right. So that covers um, it, you know, the, the real basics about, about creating an SE and, and then loading them there. It's, it's as simple as you just kind of right click and keep loading. You know, here we saw that, those two columns. <clears throat> you know, maybe, maybe we're gonna, gonna rate them today. Um, then next week, if we're gonna do the same thing again, or I think in this, this study, it looked like it was every month, um, just another right click and you can just insert that SE once again. And it's just going to give us another another set of that same description that we can perform this action again. And you'll notice it again that that SE name and that SE description is used again. So it's it's a nice way also to see how they are are grouped. You can see that I've repeated this this SE several times. And if you were to want to combine this uh, trial or combine the assessments in, in this trial with with other trials. Um, with our, our you know, ST, for example, it was really nice. You could, you could combine just by the SE name if, if you wanted. Uh, you also notice there's an SE group number field. Um, it's in italics because it's read only. You can't actually change this number. The number itself doesn't really matter, uh, but just in case you notice that on your, in your ARM, uh, essentially it's just ARM's internal um, marking for when you have, have a group of columns. 
So here you can see column 15 and column 16 both have SE group number 15. So this is just ARM's way to know that these two columns are inherently linked together. We brought them in at the same time. They're, they're kind of a, a unit. So if I were to want to delete, a same thing here for 17 and 18, they're group number 16. So if I were to come back here and delete this data column number 17, ARM says, well, this is part of a group. Number one, do you want to delete it? You consider that there's some calculations or some, there's some other ratings that, that may be related to you. Do you really want to take it out? Even more so, um, do you want to remove that whole group? It's, maybe, it's probably not valid to take out just one from that whole group, um, or at least I want to warn you to make sure that that's what's going to happen. And in this case, there's a calculation based on that column, so it's totally going to invalidate this column number 18. So yeah, I would want to delete that entire group. So again, you don't, don't have to worry about the number itself. You can't change that number anyway, and, and it really doesn't matter for anything at all. Um, other than that, that grouping mechanism. So usually that'll be hidden by default. Um, but uh, if, if you do see it pop up, that's, that's the rationale behind that. Maybe I'll just, just hide that. I just double clicked on that row there to, to hide it um, fr from view if, if you don't want to see it. So. All right, so we, we created two SEs and, and we used them um, to, to load them here into this trial. There's also, and you may have noticed this in the last, I don't know, year and a half perhaps it was added, in your site description, there's an SE definitions tab that was added somewhat recently. And you'll notice that actually this has started to be filled in. So when you load in an SE, ARM will make note of that SE here on the SE definitions tab. So here we see that leaf phygen and the pest severity that, that we had loaded in um, are here in this list. So this becomes kind of a list of all the SEs that I've used in this study. Uh, kind of one of the nice things about that is that this SE name field you may recognize from the assessment data. If I go to my assessment data here and just in an empty column, view the list for the SE name. This actually shows the SEs that are on that SE definitions table. So since we've loaded up two SEs, from file, uh, ARM added those to our table of SCE definitions. And so essentially that we're building a, our own pick list of SEs to load. So if I'm wanting to repeat one I've already used, I don't even have to go out and find the file. I can simply look in my validation list for SE name here in the assessment data editor, and I can pick from the ones that I've already loaded in. And you can see as I click here, it'll show a preview of the, some of the most important fields that, that we've exported for that SE. I'm not sure why that one's not loading anything, but it'll show kind of a preview of, of what you would have there. If I say okay, that will do that same action of loading in that SE from file. So now we have our pest severity two columns repeated again. So that's another kind of time saver. You don't have to browse out to that network location. Once you've done it once in the trial, um, you can load it in again. You can also, if you don't want to fill in your assessment data with those columns, but you just want to plan out the, a menu and you want to just kind of fill in that SE name list, but you don't want to necessarily actually load them yet, um, but you just kind of want to create that menu to, to choose from, you can insert from this table as well. So if I just right click on, on a column, I can insert, here we go, insert SE from file. That's the exact same process. I'll grab one that I've created before. Here's a, a yield 
maybe a yield conversion or something here. Oops. I clicked in the column. I already had an SC defined. Let me undo that. I want to keep the two I already have, and I should have inserted a repeating section. So this table can expand to add as many as we want, kind of like maybe you would see on like the application tab. So you can right click and insert a repeating section, or you can also insert one from the properties panel as well. That's a nice quick way to do that. So if I right click in an empty uh, column here to insert from file. Now let me choose that. So now that loads it here in this list. So now when I'm in the assessment data and want to choose an, an assessment, there it's visible here on that list. And you can see the preview looks like, looks like it might actually have came from this very, very uh, trial because um, we had that yield in kilogram, then the moisture content, um, change it to metric ton, and then the percent of check. So um, you can see and even use that and, and load it in. So that's a nice tool. Now, instead of having to load the SE in the assessment editor, you could plan out the list of SEs. So if you're a protocol writer, um, you, could, you could use that table to, to plan out the list. Or even if you're a trialist, um, and you're not necessarily at the point where you're going to perform that assessment yet, but you just want to create kind of a set list of, of which SEs is, are possible here in this study that I should pick from, then fill in that SE definitions tab first, and now you can just reference that SE name list here in the editor to continue to load those. So I'm gonna create a new protocol just to kind of show that quickly. Since that one's kind of got a mess, we've already got assessment columns. So we got the, the empty assessment data, but we could go to the assessment, the SE definitions. And let's just insert two more. And so if I want to insert from file, let's just grab our same set here. Oops. It's just as easy as grabbing all of those from our computer to um, load that list up. And actually in a protocol, Aaron will attach those SE files. So if you're a protocol writer, you could use this to uh, save, you know, have your SEs that you want people to use and then send out this protocol or when you create the trial and send it to your trial list, these SEs will be attached and when the trialist is in the assessment data, they should use the SE, SE name. Turn that one on, I'll turn the description on too, and then just pick from that list. Now they have the list of all of the uh, assessments, the, the descriptions that you, the, the protocol writer, want them to use. It's gonna save them time. They don't have to sit and, and type and, and fill in the all of the uh, descriptions there. They don't have to wonder how you want to describe it. They can just run down the, the list and grab the one that they need. And here's a nice example of that rating date came in. We didn't have a study rule before, but because we included that in the SE, that rating date for columns one and two are applied to this protocol. Or if we were loading it into a trial, they didn't have that rule already defined, it's, it's going to attach that for those columns that we just inserted. Let me insert one more, and I kind of accidentally did this um, already, but the SE name field, you'll notice actually has a validation list here on the SE definitions tab as well. And that's a slightly different list. This is a personal list of all the SEs I have used. So you'll see that Lee Phygen that we created today, that is in the list. Our pest severity, that is in the list. 
also that the one that we had used a moment ago, that one's in the list too. So here we can see all the ones that I have loaded myself um, in, in ARM before, that these are all found on in, in this list. And you have the nice preview, you, so you can see what it is you're, you're committing to if, if you want um, uh, to load that in there um, in, in the tab. There's also a master list. So this might be a nice tool for those of you just getting started with SEs and not quite sure how to build them or, or maybe even not even SEs, but just in general, how to fill in an assessment column description. So we had one of, one of the uh, uh, large sponsors actually provided us their list of SEs uh, so that everyone could could use, and that is this master list here. Um, so really, it's it's a very large table of of all sorts of different types of assessments, and and as you click on on the different ones, you'll see kind of a preview of of how they uh, described that uh, rating. So they have a code which isn't going to help you very much, but that's the SE name that'll get used. Um, usually the C7 means I think there's seven different columns involved in that SE. So that's just a little hint as to how big that is. Um, and then the SE description is really kind of what's going to, what it's going to tell you you're going to do. Um, so, you know, here we're doing a percent of in, infected fruits um, and then there's a disease index involved. So it tells you the calculation that that's being used. Um, so there's some calculations on top of the actual data entry you would do. So this can be a great list if you want to filter. Um, you could type in here and filter for, um, you know, pest severity maybe. Uh, see what kind of, the, what type of ratings they have here. So here's a pest severity for, for a plant. This is how they chose to, to describe it. Um, so if you wanted to use that, uh, you can simply choose OK and it'll put that SE in your SE definitions table. And so now it'll be very simple to load and, and utilize that in your assessment data, just like we saw before. Use your SE name and it'll load that right in. So that's on the SE definitions table. If you just insert a, a new column and, and view the list um, kind of hiding under the, under the SE name field. There's a master list that, that you can use um, for, for ideas. You know, maybe, maybe it's just a simply, you just want to look to see what, what they've done and maybe you tweak it, maybe you create your own SE. Or if you wanted to, um, you could load in like that pest severity and it's like, well, that's great, except I do, you know, I do one thing maybe a little bit different. So you could load in that SE and then just export. I'm going to choose column three. Um, if I, if maybe I changed, um, in this case, they didn't use one of the prior rated, so I should maybe say the the uh, crop. So pest is the prior rated, or, or whatever, uh, whatever changes you would want to make to how they used it, then you can export that SE. And, and change change the name and make your own SE from that. And so I want column three and I want to include those rows and this will include those, those changes that I made. And um, so now I can save save that with this, uh, this own name. I could totally start with a different one. Maybe I'm just gonna put my initials next to it because it's pretty much the same thing, uh, whatever you would like. So that might kind of answer uh, Matt's question from earlier too uh, about making small tweaks is load in and when you create that SE um, the, the way you want, you can also um, load it in and then make your small tweak and then export again and just save it as a new name. So that's another way to kind of, kind of make little, little tweaks and, and just generate new files um, for those little tweaks. <clears throat> so that's that's a lot of information. There's a lot a lot of ways to use these these SEs. 
um, you know, kind of showed the whole gamut of them. If I would, you know, I'd recommend if you've never used an SE before, um, maybe maybe don't stress out about the SE definitions. Uh, you know, it's 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 viable and and certainly um, useful to just skip to the assessment editor using the right click, um, exporting to create, and then right click inserting to to fill in. And, and get used to them, see how they work, find out you know, what you need to do to tweak. If, if, you, uh, if you start going and finding out, you know what, this pest severity, um, that's working pretty good, but I'd really like to put in the pest type. It'd be really nice if I had included at least the disease in there so I don't always have to pick disease each time I'm entering my pest. Then you can simply right click and export and, and basically export kind of over the top. So let's take one and two, and I'm going to grab my same fields, but this time I want to make sure that I also grab that disease because that's kind of the additional information that I want to include. It's asking about study rules. Yes, I, I want to include those in the SE. And if I don't change the name, so here it loaded the name because it read it from the SE name field, or you could specifically choose that file again and just overwrite. You could overwrite that file in place to, to kind of perform an update essentially on what you would, you would want. If it's really the same one and you just are kind of performing a tweak to it to improve it, you can do that as well. But that's kind of the... the uh, kind of the most basic is using the right click and then maybe as you become more comfortable with it you can can graduate a little bit to peeking into that SE definitions tab and, and utilizing it there or um, just remember that you can once you've loaded in an SE once you can start to use it in that SE name field um, as you go and then the protocol writer they can they if you want you can start leveraging those um, SEs um, and putting in the SE definitions allows you to plan out, allows you to provide the SEs to the trialist. If you're sending that trial, um, you know, sending the protocol or going to create a trial for them and send the trial, um, you can provide those SE files for them. And then it's, a, it's an instruction for them to use those. Um, it's also maybe it will be a time saver for them that they can just load in those, those SE files and they don't have to sit and fill in the columns. Um, the column descriptions and and the bonus for you is it's it's going to be consistent now all of the trialists that you sent this to if they use the SEs they're all going to send you data back with the same description um, for those assessments and that for anyone that's had to use ST or try to combine data is is just a godsend um, th there's a lot of a lot of struggle in trying to to get consistent data back and so that's really um, just, just kind of an immeasurable amount of savings there with, with SEs, if you can, if you can pull that off. <clears throat> A question that came in, does naming an SE add it to the personal list? So, so yeah, essentially once you, um, well, let's try that. Let's, let's create one, um, I guess we did create this, the ZUS, F002, I created one with my initials on it, but we haven't yet loaded it. Um, my first thought was it was the action of loading it in that adds it to the list. So let's check our personal list here, and I don't have it yet. So not necessarily naming it puts it in this list, but I think once we've utilized it. So if I insert from file and choose this one we just created, now I believe it will be added to your personal list. Yep. So naming it does not yet. So once you've created the file, that doesn't necessarily add it to your list yet, but as soon as you've used it, as soon as you import it, either on the SE definitions tab, like I did here, or if, if you're not to that point of using the SE definitions, it'll still add it when you import it here. So if I inserted it from file there, it will uh, add it to that list. <clears throat> Next question, some of the SE files have ARM action codes that I cannot find in the action code definition list. 
Um, so I'm wondering if that, uh, perhaps some of those are from that master list. Um, it would be, it might be good to know if, if you're finding some of those, yeah, um, some of those action codes. I, I don't think it's a secret and some of you maybe have already been with that company to kind of recognize their SEs. It was uh, Syngenta uh, had these SEs and, and so we were using, using theirs um, and they have since, uh, if, if you've worked with, with their um, customization at all, they've since changed their old school customization to be much, much more like our, our screens. So we've been kind of working with them to, to meld the two together. And so I think our hope would be that any um, any calculations and things that are in these list of SEs would now be available uh, in in the standard screens so that you could use them. So I would say if you're finding some that aren't, um, let us know. You know, send let us know which which SE name it is. Um, it, you know, if you want to send me an email, if if you're finding those, and um, we can dig in to see. Um, that maybe we need to pull in some of those action codes if there's if there was a special code that was in their old customization um, that we need to pull into the, the standard screens or maybe they just named it slightly different and we just need to update that SE to to reference the code that that we use in the standard screens um, that would really be so if you find any mismatch like that definitely let us know um, because yeah, essentially these SEs were all in, in the Syngenta customization back in the day. And, um, and so we're trying to, to meld those two together. And so their customization, pretty much everything they're using in their, or I should say configuration now, um, is, is really melded in with the, the GDM DEF, the standard screens. Um, so hopefully these SEs would reflect that. Um, but but it wouldn't wouldn't surprise me as you can see there is a, a large number of them it wouldn't be too surprising if some got passed so uh, great let me just jot down that uh, I two one six C three if you can even just find it here just give me I two one six C three yeah so at PIT um, great. Yeah, that you know, that one I don't recognize off, off of that head either. Um, I would, would I would kind of wonder if it even works at all. Um, you know, if we had it in a trial and put in data, if it uh, if it'll calculate or not. But uh, certainly that would be a good one I can, can, can play around with. Um, if you're finding a bunch of them, um, let us know. Uh, maybe I could flip over to the trial. Just just try that quick. I want to load that from the SE definitions table first. Let's look at the master I216 C3. Now to use that here. Also, if anyone is a sponsor, um, sending out trials to a trialist, there is a study rule that can insist, oh, the calculation is working. So that's at least good that we have that, um, oops, now I'm trying to overwrite calculated value, but yeah, I don't know offhand what the, the at um, PIT would be. So um, at least it's working, that, that's good. That'll give you a value. Um, maybe you can kind of guess it looks like it's probably taking, I'm guessing B would be calling 15 divided by 14 times 100, kind of as a percent. Um, this look, looks like it's what it's doing. Um, but I think it would be reasonable to see how we could, could make that available. Um, so I think kind of what I was doing was just kind of reading the description here, percent of attack fruit, and I think they kind of gave you the, the calculation. But I agree, that's definitely not, uh, not intuitive. Um, to be honest, I, I kind of want to learn a little more about where that thing exists. Um, 
that's not in our list, but obviously it's in, it's in some list somewhere, ARM's brain somewhere. Um, so I'll, I'll do a little checking out of that. And if I learn something, I'll, I can send you, in, send you an email. Um, all right, um, backing up one question here. Um, Yeah, great question. I probably won't dive in too much to, to actually how to do it, but, uh, but the question is just as you can standardize SEs, can you create customized standardized reports? Um, so I guess the, the one word of, of customized reports uh, is, is kind of a, a limit to that um, in that when you're in the print reports, uh, you can choose these components. Um, and certainly, like the AOV means table, that's got a lot of options that you can you can customize and choose which options. Um, it, you can't necessarily build a report from scratch, but to, to a certain extent, you can customize all of the options. You can choose which components you want to include in your your printout. So you know maybe I want a trial treatment, um, and then my site description, and then then my my data. Um, yeah, throw a trial map in there. Um, before the data, maybe um, you can you can choose uh, configure all of your options just the way you want, and then just like we do with an SE, you can standardize this by saving it as a report set. So there's a button here, and it's just the exact same like we did with the the SE file. It's going to save this configuration just the way you have it in ARM right now. It's going to save it. It's going to save it to that same folder even, so you can share it just like we talked about with SEs. Um, and it's going to save all of the options, um, the list of reports that you've chosen, so that way uh, you kind of have it set in stone um, as the way you have it. So then others in your company can print the same type of report, or you can print the same report next year. You know, when you get to that point where you're doing your, you, you make your report all pretty for your, your summary, and then, um, you know, in the spring, you're messing around with it later, and then in the fall, you're ready to do that same set, and you've changed all your options. Um, this is a way to, to go back to that immediately. And so, um, like you said, we can, we can go into this a little more detail. Um, in, in another another video, but it's just like the SE, and now you can simply load. So here's a trial summary that I've saved before, and you can just click there to load it, and you can save it. So that's really, you know, when you become, you know, as you're a beginner with ARM, there's 15 billion things you can do, and it, it's all just flooding you with, with possibilities, and it's overwhelming. Um, and we kind of tell people in those trainings just just to learn the basics, get get used to the flow and how things go. And then once once you get get your your feet steadied and and you kind of know what's happening, these are the exact things that you can really really start diving into ARM to to standardize and to save you time. Um, you know, a lot of the components of in of ARM have something like this that. But once, once you do it, once you've gotten good at doing that piece, you can, can save how you've configured it so that way you can, can automate it and, and you can come back to that point where you can share that with others. Um, the same type of thing with, the, uh, with study rules. If you get really good at creating a list of rules you want to, to um, define, you can save that as a rule set. And you can load that for multiple trials or have everyone in your company use that same set. Um, you know, the treatments, you have that idea of, of the validation list that you can fill in all of your, your products and, and add them to your list and, and make your list of products that then um, you can use and reuse so you're not hand typing information in. That's really, that's really where um, you can kind of level up your, your usage of ARM once you've gotten once you've gotten into it and get your feet wet, um, maybe survive a year or two of of, of trials. Um, that and that's kind of where where our angle is for these webinars. Hopefully, is is learning things like that because it can it can save you tons of time. So really, kind of kind of anything you're doing in ARM, you can maybe on the back of your head think it'd be nice if I could repeat this and not have to enter the same thing in all the time. But there might be a feature for that. So. Great, great question. I'm just scanning our questions here. I think I did have one um, for for the end of of the session. It it is 11 o'clock, so I guess you know certainly I, I can set anyone free that that might have another appointment. Typically these go for about an hour, 
um, but certainly I'm not, I'm not in any hurry to run out the door. So I've got one question here that I can cover. If, if you have more, feel free to stick around and, and ask them. Uh, but if you do have to get going, thanks, thanks for your time. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of try to hit, hit this one and any other ones quick um, if, if you want to stick around. So the question is that I did a protocol and, and generated a trial. If I make a modification in the treatments, uh, maybe specifically the treatment rates and the protocol, how can I update the trial? Um, unfortunately, there's really not an automated way to do that. So once you set up your protocol and, and you generate a trial, um, that kind of severs the link. There, there isn't... Um, there isn't kind of a living, breathing link where you could automatically send updates from a protocol to your trials. So um, what I would recommend is, you know, maybe depending on how many trials you have, or you know, if you've already started that trial and started entering information, um, you probably would just have to make that same modification again to the trial kind of manually. So you would, you know, depending on how complicated the thing was, what probably what I would do is, is I would open up um, the trial in, in kind of one half of my screen, and then I'd spin up another ARM and, and open up the, the protocol where I made my changes and put it on the other half of my screen. And then I can just walk through and, and make sure that I get all those changes um, copied over to, to the trial. And if, you know, if, if I've got three trials I have to do that with, um, I would have to do that for, for all three. Um, there isn't kind of an active, uh, let me see if I just have a protocol here, just as an example. Here's a training protocol and it's a duplicate because I've got all sorts of duplicate training files there. But that's, that's what I would do. Um, there, there's kind of not an automatic way to do that, but you could uh, just line them up next to each other to make sure you, you make all those changes. Um, Hopefully, hopefully that helped your, your question. There's um, kind of once you've generated that other trial, um, you could, in theory, um, just regenerate a new trial, you know, just depending on how far you're into that trial. You know, if I've only generated that, that uh, trial file but haven't really been in it, you could just cut ties with it. Maybe I'll just delete that trial file and create it, you know, create it again with my modifications. Uh, really, maybe it just depends on, um, yeah, really just depends on maybe how much you've got, how much work do I have into that trial file? You know, if, if I don't have a specific randomization and I haven't really entered many site details, time-wise, you know, it's really up to you how much time am I gonna spend um, editing those trials versus just I'll delete my trial file and, and create it again from that protocol. Um, either one of those would work, but yeah, that's it's a good question. Um, it definitely could, could be a potential time, time saver um, but unfortunately, ARM doesn't doesn't have that that linkage. So, great. All right, I think we got all of the questions from earlier. I see we had one that just came in. Um, uh, so future webinar and study rules. Yeah, so that's definitely one um, that that I'm wanting to do. And actually, I could see it almost being a full week. Um, that we could cover rules. I, I just haven't quite split it up in my mind of of what topics went. Um, but I kind of envision a, a study rules week, I think just about um, where we can, we can cover all of that. So, uh, so I don't have one recorded yet, um, but, but tentatively speaking, I think um, you may see them probably not next week, um, but the following week. I think we'll, we're kind of looking for what, what to cover next. And just, just based on these webinars that, that we've been doing, um, I think I can't, don't think I get through, through more than, more than two webinars before a question on study rules and we spend a couple minutes on, on study rules. Um, so it kind of invariably those always come up and in some of the, the office hours I've done where we just kind of open up and have people ask questions, study rules is a question. So uh, I think that's a, a really huge one that, that we've got to address. So, so real tentatively speaking, you can see it in a couple of weeks is, is kind of where I'm slating. Um, I got to plan some more. Um, yeah, ST, that's a great one, Paul as well. Um, to be a multi-webinar as well. Um, I've, got, I've got kind of a set speech, uh, about, it's usually about a 45 minute phone call that, that I'll get in support 
um, that somebody like, well, I'm just starting with ST, but I'm kind of lost and I don't know what to do. And I've kind of got just this 45 minute speech that I can do um, just, just about my sleep because it's kind of the same steps of just talking through it. Um, so that would probably be where we would start with ST. Um, but then there's a lot more, you know, I just kind of barely scratched the surface on that. So yeah, there's a lot more we could do with some, some webinars there. Uh, the, only, the only struggle I have with the ST is, is after the, the basics, it's kind of like, how do, you, how do you train on some of those more advanced topics without having a really good data set that, that you know? You know, it's really it's so much easier to work in ST when you know your data. Um, but you know, hey, that's that's a uh, that's a task for the the person making the webinar, right? So, um, but great, thanks thanks for the questions and and the comments. Um, it's great to hear some ideas of what what you all want want to learn. That's that's really our goal. Um, not so much just to find things I like to talk about, um, but uh, you know things that that you guys can learn. So so thanks for for sharing some of your thoughts on what you like, and thanks for for taking the time today. Um, I think that that wraps it up. So um, again, thanks thanks for attending and listening, and I kind of look forward for to uh, webinars in the future. So thanks everybody.